Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Got Lamont here with me. Episode number six, In Your Face. <laughs> All right, so this one comes to us from YouTube username Epistogramma Dwarf Cichlids, which that's a pretty cool name, lucky to get that. <laughs> um, but it says, hey Corey, can you do a video about acclimation and the different methods? I'm struggling finding the best acclimation method myself and have tried different ways, but I am still not sure what the best method for the health of the fish is. So I know a bunch of different ways to do it. I'm gonna see how Lamont likes to do it, and then I'll fill in other ways that I have done it, and for some things I will do it or not do it. So how would you do it? Well, so in certain circumstances, say if I'm taking an orphan fish, and it hasn't been through the store as in somebody just dropped it off. So what I'll do is I'll test the water in the bag, which, you know, as far as waste levels, probably isn't going to give you an accurate reading, but as maybe as pH or something like that will give you an indication of how close you are to the new tank. But, I mean, sometimes it's right on and make the decision to basically make sure that they're equal temperature and you can just move one into the other and it's not a problem. But um, but if you do run into a situation where it's, the parameters are on the opposite ends of the spectrum, so to speak, at that point I just basically float the bag and then I slowly add in tank water over the course of about an hour. And then uh, generally that's good to go. So. All right. Uh, so I'm gonna do a checklist because I would acclimate fish differently based on these scenarios. So I'm going to start uh, with the most common one that the viewer is going to be dealing with, and that is you went to the pet store, you're buying a fish, and you're bringing it home in a timely manner, and that might be under two hours. So if you're going to buy a fish from a pet store, you buy the fish, it's bagged up, you bring it home. Uh, one, we probably have reasonably close water parameters unless uh, you know, something has gone way off. And we're going to assume you're keeping good water so that we don't have old tank syndrome going on where we haven't done a water change in a year and, you know, every time we add a fish, a bunch die, but some make it. Um, so what Lamont would do would be perfect and that would be test water, make sure we're reasonably close. We're gonna add water to the bag every 15 minutes or so with the goal being that, um, after about an hour, we've doubled the amount of water in the bag, so it's about 50-50. We've got 50% store water, and we've got 50% your tank water. And then what you would want to do is net the fish out and add it to your aquarium. This is assuming, uh, you always want to assume that your water is healthy and water from someone else is not. Even if it is another one of your own aquariums or you know it's the best fish store in town, you don't know the history of that water. If it had meds in it, if it um, you know, has a bunch of ammonia or whatever you're not testing for, it's easier just to go, well, let's not introduce that water. We'll put fresh tap water in to top the tank off, that type of thing. Um, so that's the way I would acclimate bringing a fish home from the pet store. There's lots of, I would say, little additives or tricks around that as well. If we're doing aggressive fish, um, you know, one, we hopefully are adding more than just one fish to disperse the aggression, but we would want to, or at least I would want to, uh, do a partial water change while I'm acclimating the fish. Two, I don't want to float the bag. In an aggressive tank, sometimes you'll have a fish that are constantly pestering the fish through the bag and stressing it out. Uh, so I might do it in a bucket down on the floor and be acclimating that way. Um, another thing we might do with an aggressive tank is we might turn the tank light off before we net the fish in, so it's got some time to find a space. Uh, some other things we can do is reset territories. If we move this rock over here and this piece of wood over here, no longer is it, well, if you come by this rock, I will kill you. They don't know that that rock over there now is it's anyone's territory. And so if we, we've turned the light off, we've rearranged the decor, we've changed some water, which brought in a lot of new smells from the tap water. It won't instantly just smell, hey, angelfish number four entered the aquarium. Um, all those things can help hedge your bets. Also, if sometimes we feed in one corner of the tank and we introduce the fish on the other side so it can kind of dip down, all those things can help distract. 
and that's just for your typical uh, acclimation now for adding five neons to five neons already in there. A lot of that aggression stuff is a moot point, but I wanted to cover that because a lot of our followers are, you know, African cichlid keepers or Central and South Americans or even just angelfish and rams and epistos. So that's how, that's the safest way uh, to acclimate a fish from a store, bringing it home, assuming you've got time and everything, and that's just for fish. If we were doing invertebrates, I would, uh, invertebrates being shrimp, you know, it's one of those things we're always going to advise being uh, safe, so we would drip acclimate. Um, for snails in general, I don't, I just, I just chuck them right into the tank, and uh, they seem to thrive as long as your pH and your hardness is high enough anyway. Um, and then there's other, the other scenarios I'll get to, which not everyone's dealing with this, but let's take the next most common one for someone watching the video, and that would be, I just got a fish in the mail, and it may have been in the, um, in the mail for a day, two days, three days, you know, if it's being sent priority, if it's being sent overnight, um, but then, so now you've got a fish that has used the bathroom in a bag for X amount of days, there's ammonia in there, and what you run into is the pH will usually drop, and if the pH gets low enough, it'll turn ammonia into ammonium, which basically becomes non-toxic. At that low level, it's not burning gills and things like that. And the problem is, if we open the bag and we expose it to some oxygen, naturally the pH is going to raise a little bit, and if we take a scoop of water and we pour it in, and let's say our tap water is 7.5, and the bag water is at 6, and it's, it's under 6.4, by the way, that ammonia changes. But if we all of a sudden come to 7.5, we could have very high levels of ammonia in there, and then it's really doing damage to the fish. So most times what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to either A, float it, or at least get the, the bag to the same temperature. If they came in really, really cold, um, sometimes you'll set them on a table and let them come to room temperature, and then you'll float them in an aquarium, hopefully a non-aggressive aquarium so they're not getting you know, uh, harassed through the bag. Um, let them come up to temperature, and then what you want to do is you want to open the bag and pour them through a net, and then um, go ahead and dump them straight into the tank. They can take it kind of hard, because they might be going from 6.0 pH to 8, but uh, it's... I, I experience a lot less losses, and so do a lot of professional shippers and things like that. It's kind of, they're going to be sulky about it, they're going to shed their color, but they usually make it just fine. And, uh, you know, that is the safest way. There are some saltwater people that will, basically, the, the shipment will come in, and this could be for wholesale or whatever at this point, and you open the bag, you instantly check the pH, and then what you're going to do is you're going to start buffering the pH and you're going to start uh, detoxifying the ammonia with ammo lock and things like that at the same time. And it's a very delicate balance and takes a lot of experience to pull it off correctly most times. But the saltwater fish can't take huge um, changes very well. Like they can't take a temperature change, they can't take you know even pH or hardness or just even waste and so a lot of times they're forced to do that and it's a lot of work and you could do a little bit too much uh, you know pH adjusting and kill the fish outright anyway but those are the two most likely scenarios and then I'll hit the last one uh, if you're importing fish or you own a store something like that we're basically gonna uh, un you open a box you start unpacking you start floating uh, bags of fish in the quarantine tanks or your sales tanks or whatever it is and you're going to let them all get to temperature. By the time you've got them all out, then you go back to the first ones you pulled out of a box and you start opening the bags, pouring them into a net and so you're separating the water and the fish, put them into the tank, then like the way we would do it, we're going to dump that water out and we're going to switch nets and we're going to move to the next bag so that the net we have isn't contaminating every fish after it. So if you use the same net to strain 15 bags of fish, if bag number two had ick or fin rot or something like that, from two to 15 now also has that. And so sterilizing the net, or we, we actually switch nets between every bag, um, 
we don't switch buckets every time. It takes a lot of buckets. But the only way for that to happen, to contaminate from the bucket, we do empty the water. So we basically have to dump the water through the net, have a fish jump out into the water, and it would be one fish. And at that point, we can still take all the other fish, put them in the tank. We could take that fish that could possibly be contaminated and put it into a different quarantine tank and keep moving on. And that's how wholesalers are going to do it most of the time. I can't speak for every wholesaler, but you know, when you're importing, you know, 300 bags of fish, you're not really going to drip acclimate. Um, but that's how most people are going to do it. Stores are going to do it every once in a while. Um, drip acclimation will happen if there's a lot of money on the line. It's not necessarily better. People just think it's worth it, so to speak, you know? And so if you have a box of stingrays and there's eight Matoro stingrays, you're going to drip acclimate, worry that you're going to kill them. But if there was ammonia in the bag, you're actually killing them by doing it the wrong way. Same thing with zebra plecos and stuff like that. People are so afraid they're going to kill a zebra pleco that they're going to treat that zebra pleco way different than a different hypen sister they only paid $30 for it. It thrives when you dump it into the tank. Oh, it did great. The zebra plecker should do the exact same thing, but because that higher price tag, we're afraid of killing it and we'll go outside our norm. So that's how I would acclimate fish and shrimp in those different situations. Uh, I would stress, if you have a system that's working for you, keep doing it. You know, the big thing is people are trying to find the best and if you have something that's already working, that is the best. You're, you're changing it for no reason. And everyone will have their own opinion, and the internet's full of them, and they're going to tell you why well, you're doing it wrong. And your fish will tell you if you're doing it wrong. If they're not living, you're doing it wrong. If they are living, you're doing it right. So, you know. But that's, that's what I've, I've learned over acclimating tens of, maybe even hundreds of thousands. Who knows how many fish at this point. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of the the scoop and dump, so. All right. That's, that's a lot of acclimation technique. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter Q. <laughs> All right. If you like what you saw, go ahead and give it a like, boost the video up, shows other people. If you didn't like it, leave a comment and uh, ask us a question that you do want to see us talk about. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, you probably don't like us, that's fine. Um, but we're gonna see you in the next video. What do you got for me, Lamont? Um, Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. That's fine. <laughs> it's almost better that way. <laughs>